Welcome to Complete Cubase 7 by Streamworks Audio. My name's Walt Honeycutt, and in these videos, the Streamworks team and I will take you on a guided tour of Cubase 7. Cubase is used every day on CDs and movies around the world, and it can take you as far as you want to go, and we're here to help you get going. Before we jump in, I want to give you a few pointers about these videos. I'm going to assume that you've already watched the quick start videos that came with Cubase 7. A lot of what's presented here builds on those videos. Second, I'll assume that you have Cubase installed and that you're comfortable with basic operations. Third, we'll assume you're using Cubase in a professional studio. So we've included academic subjects like file structure, project organization, and tips to use with your clients. Also, we'll be using a Macintosh computer with a two-button mouse, so you'll see references to right-clicking and the command key. If you're using a Windows PC or a single-button mouse, you'll need slightly different modifier keys to achieve the same results. These videos are organized by topic. That means that the chapters can be watched in any order. However, I encourage you to watch them in sequence because the academics in chapters 1 and 2 are crucial to understanding the rest of the presentation. Finally, keep in mind that you've invested in a lot more than just recording software. You've also purchased new VST instruments, new effects units, a professional scoring package, a complete MIDI sequencer, and one of the most sophisticated media management systems in the industry. Now that's a lot to learn, so you may want to return to chapters 1 and 2 in the future to help solidify the concepts and the vocabulary required for maximum performance. So that's it for the fine print, here we go. By the end of this chapter, you'll have a solid understanding of how Cubase streams audio directly to the hard drive, why Cubase insists on setting your project's location before recording, the components inside a Cubase project folder, latency and options to keep it to a minimum, the difference between audio clips, audio events, and audio parts, several ways to conserve hard drive space, and some of the advantages and drawbacks to external hard drives. One of the most important concepts to understand is how Cubase handles audio. When you record audio, Cubase streams the data directly to your hard drive. This means that you have to tell Cubase where the project will be saved before you can begin to record. Another important concept is that a Cubase project is not just a single file. A Cubase project is actually made up of several components. All of these components are stored in the project folder. Two of the most important components are the project file and the audio folder. The Cubase project file has a .cpr extension, and it contains all of the system settings and MIDI data for your project. However, it's the audio folder that contains the actual audio data. The project folder also contains backup files generated by the autosave function. These have a .bak extension. An images folder with peak files inside. And peak files are just the waveform graphics that you see in the project window. An edits folder will appear automatically as you begin to create different versions of audio clips. And now we have track pictures that are associated with your project. The menus at the bottom of the Project Assistant let you choose where Cubase will store your project. You can select Prompt for Project Location if you want to manually create your project folder, or select Use Default Location if you want Cubase to create the project folder automatically. I recommend that you use a manual option so that you can keep your information completely organized. Let's take a moment to discuss the importance of organization. Attention to detail during setup, combined with a systematic approach to recording, will ensure that things move smoothly. Here are some recommendations. Create a separate master folder to hold your personal projects and client projects. Within those master folders, create a separate project folder for every project. Name your tracks before recording so that the audio clips will be named appropriately. and use consistent naming for your tracks. Add detailed tags to your files to allow full use of the filtering and search functions, and back up your data regularly. Data only exists if it exists in two places. Now one issue with any digital recording process is latency. Latency is the delay caused by the digital encoding process itself. The more processing a signal has to go through, the greater the latency. 
Now, if this delay exceeds more than about 20 milliseconds, it'll become noticeable to the performer. To keep latency to a minimum, we suggest the following. Use direct monitoring if your audio interface supports it. Direct monitoring provides zero latency recording by sending the signal back to the performer before it ever enters the CPU. If direct monitoring is not an option, minimize the use of effects during recording. Finally, reduce the buffer size as much as practical, typically about 512K or lower. But keep in mind that if the buffer size is too small, it can cause pops and clicks during periods of high CPU usage. If you notice pops and clicks, try the following. Increase the buffer size slightly. Freeze tracks to lighten the CPU load, and you can check the performance meter for that. Avoid CPU intensive effects like reverence during the recording process. Save those for mixing. And make sure that no other programs, especially backup utilities, are running while you're recording. Now, if pops and clicks continue, but the performance meter indicates that CPU usage is low, the noises are probably coming from another source, like a bad cord, noisy power supply, or something in the environment, like a cell phone or an iPad. There are six terms used throughout Cubase when discussing audio. File, clip, event, part, track, and region. They all sound similar, but there are important differences. Understanding these terms will make learning and using Cubase much more straightforward, especially when consulting the manual or help screens. Now, there are six different terms for audio because Cubase has six different ways to use audio. And when you start recording, the audio is streamed directly to your hard drive and written as a file. Now, since Cubase uses non-destructive editing, this original file is left unaltered through the rest of the production process. Cubase then creates a copy of the original file called a clip, and this clip basically contains instructions about how Cubase should play back the associated file. So when you add an effect or make an edit, those changes are made to the clip, not the original file. Now, when you place a clip onto one of your tracks, it becomes an event. And when you join several events together, they're known as a part. And of course, the container for all of this is your audio track. Normally, all of this happens automatically whenever you press record. Cubase will simultaneously capture the audio as a file, create a clip, place that clip into the selected track as an event. The entire process is transparent to the casual user. And if all you are doing is basic record and playback operations, none of this vocabulary matters very much. But when you get into advanced editing, it is critical to know the difference between editing a part and editing an event and so forth. Now, one last vocabulary word, regions. Regions are used to focus Cubase on sections of a clip. So let's say you click and drag over just a small area of an event. The highlighted portion is called a region. And later we'll see how regions are used in cycle recording and beat slicing and stuff like that. Finally, let's discuss storage space. Audio files can be enormous, especially at higher sample rates. And as your computer hard drive fills up, you lose performance. So here are some recommendations to help keep storage space under control. Configure your project for a resolution that makes sense. Recording at extremely high sample rates and bit depths consumes enormous amounts of hard drive space. For most projects, a sampling rate of 44.1 and 16-bit resolution, which is still full CD quality, is probably fine. Run the cleanup function regularly to help eliminate unused audio files. Keep only active projects on your main PC. Move other project folders to an external drive or back it up to a DVD. But be sure to do this using the backup project function. Otherwise, you risk leaving something behind. The backup project function makes sure everything you need gets moved. And one note about external hard drives. They are terrific backup devices, but they can be problematic for recording or for sound libraries. Remember, Cubase streams the audio directly to and from the hard drive. And most outboard drives and their associated connections simply can't keep up with that demand. So you run the risk of increased latency, dropouts, and other errors. Okay, let's move on to chapter two, and we will look at several advanced setup options.